it's Andrea, the South African girl living in Canada. Uh, today, you're going to join me at a store in downtown Toronto on College Street called Isabelle. And um, I can't wait for you to meet Abby Erica. She's with me today. Abby, thanks so much for having me in your store. My pleasure. Fantastic. So tell me a little bit about your story. What is the South African connection? Well, when I was 18, I lived in Botswana, so I already have had a strong sense of connection with the region. And then in my 30s, I met a my now partner who's from Cape Town. Um, wow. And I was lucky enough with him and our daughter to be able to travel back and forth between mm. South Africa and Canada. Yeah, amazing. That is so, so nice. And then, of course, Isabella was born. How long has the store been on College Street? Just for one month. So okay. I'm brand new. <laughs> baby, baby, baby steps. Yes. So I'm super excited about the products that you've got in here. Are you sourcing everything from South Africa specifically? Yes. A few pieces are uh, from Zimbabwe. So my Tonga baskets are from Zimbabwe. And okay. I have a few local pieces as well made by an artist friend, a friend of mine okay. who lives in Kensington. She does the... Um, the needle felting, okay. but I would say 98% of my products are from South Africa okay. and imported by me and uh, nearly all of them are not available anywhere else in Canada so I'm actually kind of the first to bring these things over. Fantastic, I think that there is a major shortage of South African uh, sort of boutique home and decor products in Canada. I know I was even checking and I'm trying to find other products and so very eclectic, very cool stuff for interior designers and to put into your home, it doesn't have to be in a contemporary home. It can be kind of a great mix with anything. So I can't wait to kind of look at the variety of stuff and maybe you can help us and just give me some information on some of the products. I saw that there were these gorgeous, it looks like a coaster from Ghana. Mm -hmm. So that I'm excited to see. And then they're beautiful handbags gorgeous linens that looks very French and beautiful. I think you are seriously lucky to be in the position you're in, like literally geographically. I think it's a great little street. College Street is kind of known as Little Italy. So you'll find a lot of Italian restaurants and coffee shops along the way. So it's a great destination, not only to come and visit, uh, give your support to all these fantastic South African products, but then also just to show the love, grab some coffee and come and have a look at the stuff. My big question is, what would make you go bricks and mortar at a time like this? I mean, what, what started stirring inside of you? I get asked that a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think people ask me with varying degrees of incredulousness. Um, I saw the, the store for rent. It was actually an old Portuguese barber shop, and I saw the potential. It's five minutes from where I live, and you know, the, the rent was something I could afford. So I just thought I would take the opportunity to, you know, go out on a limb at a time where very few few other people are because I was ready to actually have a workplace that was outside my home. I'd been mm. raising my daughter and working from home and having the odd sort of sample sale from the house. But with COVID also, I can't sell from home because it's not really odd yeah. to invite strangers into my home. So COVID in a way gave me an incentive, which sounds a bit of a paradox. But, but the other reason why I thought, you know, this would work well in this city is that for years, I've been writing about style and interior design as a journalist, and people would say to me, I love your style, how do I How do I even start with this? Like, I'm afraid of color, I'm not sure wow. whether I dare paint my wall the color that you have, or use all this color in my decorating. So, you know, I'm, I sort of felt like a lot of what made my interiors attract people and make people happy was the stuff that I found in South Africa, the beadwork, the textiles, the ceramics. Amazing. I would bring it over and, and it was fresh. It was yeah. fresh to people. So I think that there's a, a real niche here for items that are refreshing, made by hand, have a, a ton of color on them and provide that sense of humanity as well, that, that they're not mass produced, they're not from a factory in China. Beautiful, absolutely, it's fantastic. So I can't wait to show you some of the stuff that she's got. Let's talk about these incredible, they look like French linens. I mean, I can't even describe how beautiful and gorgeous this feels. Tell me more about this stuff. They are made in uh, the town of Barrydale, which is in the Klein Karoo yes. region of the Western Cape. Mm. Um, and they are hand loomed. And I cannot stress to you enough how labor intensive that process is. Wow. To, make a, to make a simple towel takes 1,500 returns of the of the shuttle on a hand loom. Wow. So one towel is you know probably a day or two days work. Um, yeah. It's hard work. 
um, but it's meaningful work. There's a great sense of um, community and collaboration at the uh, at the Barrydale Weavers, and um, they are providing employment for a number of local women in a region that um, where unemployment is at thirty percent. So it's a um, it's a very wonderful um, socially and ethically you know sustainable model. Yeah. And then the products that they make, I just. Oh, I'm in love with it. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's local cotton. So again, the, there's a low environmental footprint because the cotton isn't shipped in from somewhere in Africa, else in Africa mm. or somewhere mm. in China. It's actually grow, grown locally. Okay. Um, and uh, this is this is the shore. And all the cottons are, because they're natural cotton and because they're hand woven, they have a beautiful, breathable quality. So they're wonderful in summer and they also work well in winter as an insulating layer. Yeah, I actually, when I was looking at this one, if you'll hold that one for me, yeah. I was looking at this one, this reminds me of something that I could use, like for, for a baby, mm-hmm. like you could swaddle a baby in this because it's just so soft and divine, but yet it's natural. Yes. And it's light and breathable. Yes, that is in fact a baby it's, blanket that oh, out there. <laughs> I love it. It's so, so lovely. <laughs> So these ornaments are absolutely fantastic. What I love the most, Abby, is that we have a little head and shoulders bottle of shampoo. It's just phenomenal. I love it. It would be so gorgeous in my home or basically on a table. Tell me more about the product. Well, these are also coincidentally from the town of Barrydale, which is a bit of a hotbed of creativity. Um, There is a guy called Shane Petzer who works there and he is an artist. He runs a collective called the Magpie Collective, and um, he makes these. And local kids make these. Um, he's got all the. He's got a bunch of locals who work for him making these out of reused milk bottles, plastic milk bottles. And when I bought these from him, I bought about twenty of them. He made me promise to tell people when they buy them that they get a discount on the piece stuff if they commit to taking a photograph of the peace dove with the hashtag magpie peace dove and the idea is that it becomes a global movement and these go all over the planet and people photograph them in various different contexts and it's a statement about peace great we can do that we'll do the hashtag absolutely no problem so come and get one of these and then take a photo of yourself with it and do the hashtag thing that's an awesome idea love that love that Abby. <laughs> So it actually isn't a hat, but I decided that it actually is really beautiful. These incredible baskets. <laughs> yes, thank you. I love it when people play along with me, the craziness. <laughs> These gorgeous baskets are incredible. They actually just arrived today. This I really love. This is beautiful for contemporary, for whatever you're looking for on your table. Use it for fruit, use it on your... I mean, they're just magnificent laundry magazines the mind just oh divine this beautiful look at the base i love it so these are where these from durban you said yeah they're from near durban um and they're woven by zulu women uh they i think if anything conjures up the spirit of what i want to do here at zibele it's these baskets because not only are they the very contemporary, simple, clean shapes, mm. but they're also traditional Zulu basket weaving at its finest. Um, mm. But they happen to be made out of telephone wire instead of roots or grass, which would have been the traditional materials. Yes. Uh, telephone wire baskets started in the 1950s, and it was a way of foraging materials that were available, but also making a product that was more hard wearing and more yeah. tough. That makes sense. They're absolutely beautiful. And I'd love to show you there's actually one really big one on the shop. So let me go grab that one for you. And that is this one over here. I mean, how big is that? Look how beautiful it is. Love this. I would use this as a laundry basket, but I'd also use it for all my yoga mats. And like, I mean, I don't know, the coolness, I think I have to have one. <laughs> so feeling very posh. I love these bags, hand woven bags. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this because you're not going to believe what it's made out of. T-shirts. I mean, you just cannot believe the detail that goes into this. Look at these vibrant colors. This is so me. I have to be bold and daring. But look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Yeah, this is made from a French linen that I bought at a wonderful fabric shop in Cape Town called Bellamy and Bellamy. And yes! There are some amazing seamstresses in the town of Stonewash who... Um, 
who made these beautiful linen bags for me and the, the fully lined. And Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Right. Tell me just, I wanted to check with you because I know we've got those gorgeous cushion covers in the same thing. Yeah. These are made from strips of t-shirts. Yes. Tell me about it. How do they do that? Um, they, I think they work with black and white only. I'm assuming okay. they do so that the colors are consistent. Okay. Um, and then they shred the t-shirts to make a yarn. Mm. And then it makes a perfect yarn for hand hooking because it's naturally stretchy. Yes. Yeah, oh, so, so it cool. makes a very beefy, yeah, um, beefy thick cotton, yeah, um, which is just wonderfully rugged for daily use. And the reason the bags are quite petite is yeah. that the bigger ones would be probably a little bit heavy, but these are a perfect, no, perfect size. size. You guys are gonna love it. It's called Millie, Millie, yeah, like as in a Millie, like corn on the cob, yes, uh, and it's Millie.com. So you can check out their products. And this is a leather handle on the bag as well, yeah, which is really nice. So I am so impressed, gorgeous. And they're made in the town of uh, Imizamu Yetu, which is next to um, Hout Bay. Oh, yeah, just, just Imizamu Yetu. Yes, beautiful, <laughs> love it. Yeah, I love the shop. These are sculpture books by Jonathan Rook. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? Have a look at how these are done. No cutting. Everything is folded. I think that's really charming and divine. If you've got a bookcase. Um, and you need something that's completely different, a one-off, not one is ever the same, you would go for something like this. So I'm really excited about these shoes that you've got in your store. You wouldn't think that there would, there would be shoes in Isabella. Mm. These are called redemption shoes, and I just love the name. But most of all, if you know me well enough, I love that these are red. So we've got a whole lot of different colorways over here, but these are handmade leather shoes for $80. And let me tell you, I can imagine myself in my little black dress, black tights with these red ones on for Christmas. But just generally for every day, I think they just look super comfortable. Like even if you look inside and you look at the uh, the sole, it's soft. It's, it's there. Added, yeah. It's beautiful. Tell me more about where you found these. These are made in a little town called Wellington, just oh. outside Stellenbosch, um, nestled in the mountains. Um, and uh, Redemption is a wonderful company. It's actually based just outside Wellington, um, on it, next to a vineyard, of course. Um, and uh, it employs um, probably 20 or 30 local people who are expert leather crafters. Everything's made by hand, everything's completely leather, including the, the, le the lining. Um, yeah, and the lovely thing about them is the leather is really thick, so they're built, they're really yeah. built to last. To last. These shoes. Yeah. They're gorgeous. And I, you know what I love is I love them the shape of the front. It's not too square and it's not too round. It's just perfect. Yeah, it's quite timeless. And it's also seasonless. I mean, in a Canadian winter, you're not going to want to wear those in the middle of a blizzard, but no. you could wear them indoors all year round. Absolutely. And they're a great spring and fall shoe as well. Love it. Really, really great. Mm. So these are really amazing. Look at these gorgeous little wire angels. Just perfect for Christmas. I think we should have like 50 each for your Christmas tree. Tell me about how you source these. These are um, from an area in the Karoo um, of the Western Cape. This is a collective of women who live with HIV. Okay. Um, and they knit these angels, so they're made from knitted wire and beads. Each one is unique. Um, and it's, a, uh, it's an employment project for, Fantastic. Uh, for those lovely people. There's nothing like a feel-good purchase. Um, and especially people that are suffering from HIV, I know um, they've just got such amazing things that they're doing, helping people to provide income streams for themselves. So this is fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah it's a wonderful initiative. I'm so proud to support them. Mm, fantastic. So if I had to really choose a favorite product, oh, it's going to be so hard. I'd say maybe in the top five. But these proteas are absolutely beautiful. I love proteas. I've got protea paintings in my house everywhere. They're folded paper, painted pink inside, and I would just love these in my home. They are so, so special. So that's it from me today, Andrea, the South African girl living in Canada. You know, Isabella is a gorgeous store. You need to get down here. I'm so glad that I could meet you today. Um, really, really fabulous morning. Abby, thank you so much for having us. Um, I wish you all the best of success with your store here in College Street, downtown. Thank you, Andrew. It's been such a pleasure meeting you. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm.